Hey, what's going on everybody? In this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to install MySQL on your Windows 10 computer. So here I am at dev.mysql.com forward slash downloads forward slash MySQL forward slash 8.0.html or .html. You can select your operating system. Windows is the default. If you wanna do this for Mac and you wanna try to figure it out that way, that's totally fine. Just do the drop down here and change it to Mac OS. You can do it for Linux as well. All right, so from here, I'm gonna click on this go to downloads page button. And then from here, there's two options. I want the first option, which just means that I have an active internet connection and I'm basically downloading an installer, which will then download the version of MySQL that I want. It asks me to sign up. I say, no thanks, just start my download. On Edge browser, it's going to pop it up here in the top right corner. If you don't have that, then just go down to your file explorer and click on downloads. You'll see the file here, you can double click and it will open up this window. So this is starting it up. It'll pop up a window asking you to allow the app to make changes to your device. You say yes. It actually does another one for the MySQL installer launcher. You say yes again. Uh, the next thing you wanna do once the actual installer comes up is go down to custom. And then we'll go to next. And then up top under available products here, plus sign, plus sign next to MySQL servers, MySQL server, and MySQL server 8.0, and then the very first option, MySQL server 8.0.3.0. The green button here, the green arrow pointing to the right will bring it over to the products to be installed. That's all I need. All right, so when you click next, after you've selected MySQL server 8.0.3.0, it'll tell you, hey, it's ready for download. Click on execute and it'll download it. If you have a decent internet connection, this should only take a second or two. And then when it's ready, it'll say status downloaded. Click on next. Status ready to install. Click on execute. Again, if you have a fairly new computer, this should only take a moment. So then when it says status complete, you can click on next again. Now it's saying that the product configuration for MySQL Survey 8030 is ready to configure. So we'll click on next. And it takes us to the type and networking page. Here you're going to leave everything configured to the default unless you know specifically what and why you're changing. So click on next. Authentication method, again, leave the default, it's highly recommended. Click on next. So you need to create a strong password here for your root user and then it's recommended that you also create a user with a password. For me, I'm just going to leave the root and I'm not going to use a very strong password, but that's okay. All right, so next. And this is super important. This is where every time you start up your computer, it's gonna start MySQL in the background as a service. This is super convenient. You're not ever gonna to have to worry about starting or stopping your MySQL server. So it says Windows service and everything that it has checked, you just leave it. But it's saying configure MySQL server as a Windows service, great. This is the service name. And then your option start the MySQL server at system startup, definitely want that and then you can run the Windows service as a standard, standard system account. So with all those defaults, click on next, and then yes, grant full access to the user running the Windows service if applicable, and the administrators group only. Other users and groups will not have access. That's totally fine. Only change that if you know why you're changing it. All right, so next, this tells you all the configurations it's about to execute. You can click on execute. It says the initializing database may take a long time. It only took me like a second. So hopefully it doesn't hang up for you. When it's done, it'll say the configuration was successful. Click finish to continue. And then here under product configuration, you click on next. You can copy the log if you want to, but installation is now complete and you can click on finish. All right. So MySQL is now installed and running in the background. If you want to confirm that, you can press the window key or just click down here in the bottom left corner underneath your search and type in services. So before you even get the full word out, you can see here the best match is the services app. You can open that. It's gonna have a ton of stuff in here. So you just type MY, click on one of these first and then type MY and it'll pull up MySQL 8.0. So you can double click on that and you can see that you can stop it because it is running currently under the status and it'll take a moment to stop it and then you can start it again if you want to. So this is how you start, stop, or pause. I would never use pause unless you need to. But this is how you stop and start, restart your MySQL service. 
Right now it's running, it'll be running when you start your computer up. So unless you have a specific reason to turn it off and turn it back on, I wouldn't mess with this. I just wanted you to know where it is so that you can always check the status if something doesn't seem right. So click OK, you can close out of your services. So that's it for downloading and installing. Now let's make a simple connection. We did not install the MySQL shell. I'm gonna show you a different open source platform or client software that makes it really easy to connect to and interact with your database. Super lightweight, quick download. It's from a place called dbgate.org forward slash database forward slash mysql hyphen client.html. For me specifically, I have been doing it for Windows. You can do it for Lac, for Lac or Mac. You can do it for Linux or Mac as well under other downloads. So I'll select download for Windows. Again, this is gonna download up here and let me open it this way. If you're not on edge and you don't have quick access to your downloads, you can just go to the file explorer, click on downloads, and then double click on that dbgate hyphen latest file. We can close our browser now, we don't need it. We can let this installer go. It only takes a second and as soon as it's done, it starts up dbgate. This is the client that allows us to interact with MySQL. Now we know that MySQL is running in the background. We already checked it under services and we already set it up to be running whenever the computer's on. So here, right when we show up in the program, we have a tab for a new connection. So if you weren't to see this, then you could just click on the plus icon over here underneath connections. In this case, we have a new one already. So we go to connection type drop down, and we go down to MySQL. The defaults are server local host port 3306, which is what we set it to when we installed MySQL. Then we have our user and password. So if you created the user and gave that user a password, you can use that. If you didn't and you just used the password for the root user, then the user's name will be root and then whatever the password is that you created for the root user will go here. Everything else should be totally fine. You can test your connection by clicking on test. You could also save this connection if you wanted to. That way you could easily access it later. Here it says I'm connected to 8030. That's perfect, that's what I wanna see. So now instead of clicking test, I'm gonna click on connect. So on the left-hand side, you can see that it actually opens up my local host and all my databases here. So the, this is my connections. You have some stuff on the left-hand side that you can just mouse over and see what the options are and it'll tell you all the different things that are available to you. You also can go through File, Window, Edit, View, Tools, Help, etc. Especially Help Documentation to get instructions on how to use the, the, the software. So it's pretty intuitive. We've got localhost here. And if we right click it, we can say Create Database. And then it asks you the name of the database. So in this case, we'll just say um, the test database and click OK. So immediately it gives us test database. When you click on it, it shows you below in the same column, another row, tables, views, and functions. Database test is empty or structure is not loaded. Press refresh button to reload structure. So currently we don't have a structure. We don't need to refresh it, but we do want to create a new table. So we can click on new table. And here you can use this graphical interface to actually add columns, which are like fields inside the table. So you can say column name, uh, username. And then the default data type here is int, integer. You can change that to like a varchar or varchar 250. And then you can just select if you want it to be not null is primary key, is auto increment, default value, etc. I'm not gonna do any of that stuff. I'm just gonna say save and next. So I have username and then I'll say like email. So maybe this is for user accounts on some website. And then I'll do one called ID, which will be an INT. Uh, it cannot be null. It is the primary key and it is auto increment. And now I'll click save. So now we have this simple little table and I can save it. Um, we wanna call this table, uh, we'll just call it users, okay? And so when I click save, it actually gives me the transaction that it wants to commit that has the query that creates the table. And so here you can say OK, and it runs it. And so on the left-hand side, underneath the tables, views, and functions, you can see underneath tables, you now have this user's table, which has zero rows, which means there are no, there's no data inside this table. And so you can add a new row down here in the bottom by clicking on New Row. 
and you literally just go in under username, email, ID, and add these values. That's pretty neat. You can delete that row if you want. The other thing that you can do is you can just run queries directly on it. So a cool thing about this program is if you're not super familiar with running queries, you haven't learned MySQL yet, then you can use the graphical interface to kind of help you remember how to create those queries. So in this case, if we want to add a new row with the username of Jane Doe 123 and then the email of jane at doe.com and then the ID, it's always going to start with one and then it'll auto increment from there. And here we can go ahead and save. And when you click save, it actually gives you the raw SQL syntax that you would normally be running inside of like a MySQL shell um, or any other graphical user interface that allows you to interact with a MySQL database. So in this case, insert into the user's table these three columns, username, email, ID, the values for these three columns, Jane Doe 123, Jane at Doe.com, and one. And then you just click OK, and that gets run. It says Save to Database in the bottom right corner if you missed that. So now on the left hand side, if you click on Users, we should be able to see, maybe we have to refresh it. We should see this new row that we created. In any event, if we want to run queries, we can right click on the test database up here and click new query. And this opens up an empty text file. And this is where you can actually run SQL commands. So you're not just doing graphical user interface. If you wanted to, you could run all your queries, including the creation of the table, creation uh, of all the columns and everything inside that table, creation of all the rows, the data that goes inside the table, or the insertion of the rows into the table. You could do all that from inside here. So in this case, we can do like select one plus one, just to test it and see if it works. Down at the bottom, it says execute or you can press F5, or you can press Control and Enter. So Control Enter seems pretty intuitive for me. When I did that, it said, here's the, the what was inside the select query. And then on the right-hand side, here's what it outputted. So it outputted two, select one plus one, it adds them together and outputs two. That's great. So now if we do like a select all from, and then we call it the users table. And if we do Control Enter on this one, Lo and behold, there's Jane Doe 123, which is our first user. That is how you can very quickly and easily interact with your MySQL database using this open source tool. Again, if you're more comfortable using the MySQL shell, you can select the shell and install it during the install of MySQL itself. So back at the beginning of the video when we installed My MySQL server, you can install the shell that way. There's a bunch of different ways to access it. I just found that this is a fairly straightforward way to be able to very quickly create databases, create tables within those databases, and then interact with that data, create data, read it, update it, and destroy it. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks a lot.